Back Welcome here. to the uh, Moisty Voice episode 10. Episode 10. Yeah, we're at 10 now. Uh, not 10 it. consecutive weeks, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, 10 weeks nonetheless. Uh, we are here today. I'm Nick, as always. I am Connor. Uh, today we are without Michael because he is a very, very dry boy and uh, not to be favored. He's actually getting humidified today. Um, you got to re-moist every couple of weeks. It's a thing. He just didn't schedule it well. So, and instead, we have Bryce. Bryce. There we go. Hey. This is Bryce. He's um. He's a thing. A guy. I'm, I'm slightly damp. Yeah, he's. I'm not quite to the moist status. He's yet. a soppy boy. You'll get there. <laughs> you passed uh, the threshold. That's important. You okay. were wet enough compared yeah. to Michael, who was just bone dry. I mean, absolutely. Bones aren't dry though. They're surrounded by fluid. Yeah, but if you remove them from a body and then you wait a while, they've still got become fluid dry. in them. So are you speaking outer bone dry or inner bone dry? Wait, it's bone marrow. No, oh, that's like squishy it's like it's like spongy it's like a porous material. yeah i think i think it the paste no it's not a paste it's it's, it's I hard think to describe is a good yeah. descriptor i think it comes from finding bones in like the desert where i've never seen a bone in the desert and where do we live that's true we've You've lived really in a desert never for seen a bone in the desert no not even like a dead animal I put bone? a bone in the desert stop fucking the ground stop fuck the desert <laughs> If you scar your dick, it's perma hard. You go outside and you just go at your sidewalk. Oh yeah. Wait, that's my sidewalk now. <laughs> oh. oh man, I don't want that. Prepare for dick sidewalk. Neighbors are gonna be like, hey, uh, so that roommate of yours, why does he just You know how you could boil an egg on the sidewalk in the dead of summer here? Uh huh. Imagine in your mind what it does with my sperm. <sighs> it's amazing. It evaporates in under ten seconds. <laughs> And it leaves behind all the disappointment of your DNA. No disappointment. My DNA is tip top. Well, Cream so uh, I think the fact that you're fucking sidewalks is proof otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we have a lot that we didn't cover last week, but one thing that we did actually mention was uh, the wonderful story about the man who uh, sued, a, tried to sue, threatened to sue. Did, no, he well, did sue. He did the ended suit. up suing. Did sue eventually a uh, woman because they went on a date. She texted through the first fifteen minutes of uh, Guardians Volume Two, and then left. Um, he won. Uh, that's the world we live in. Out of court. Yeah, in court. He no, didn't... out of court. Out of court. They settled. They settled. Boo. He spent a hundred twenty to file the claim, uh -huh. and then someone, uh, some entertainment thing, brought them together. And she accepted to pay his fee. They settled out of court for the predetermined fee, and he dropped the case. So, but he won. Yeah. Next time you're win. at the end of a bad date, just you know, sue threaten him. to sue them, and then actually sue them. Yes. Oh man, that's gonna really change like the really gross dynamics of like entitled sex. Like, I'll sue you if oh, we don't bone no. at the end of this. Oh, that's awful. That's Connor pulled that on me. Yeah, I did. We just we were gonna go see uh, pirates, and then I was like, I don't want to do that. He's definitely gonna sue me if I don't fuck him in the theater. I actually already had the paperwork half filled out. It's way too much pressure, man. Were you gonna pull the whole like a uh, hole in the bottom of the popcorn bag trick? <laughs> no, no, he he, be... he reuses the popcorn bag. He needs yeah, it. Yeah, no, I can't, oh, okay. I can't do that to the popcorn bag. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's a reused popcorn bag, I mean, hopefully you're well, not if using it's a it reused again. one, I guess. But then I'm ruining the popcorn. And you know how much I love the popcorn. He's weird about the well, popcorn. Well, I mean... I'm not, no, can, it's great popcorn. No, and you know it. No, you can you can eat, like, the majority of the popcorn. I won't lose any. And then you can just leave, like, that little, I like, inch and a half losses. at the bottom. We've got two-week-old popcorn sitting on our coffee table that he was working on this morning. Oh, that it's is not, so no, it gross. Isn't. It was not two weeks. What is wrong what with movie, way What off. movie? Was that from Covenant? That was from Sunday when we went and saw oh, Guardians with Brick. Oh, it wasn't from Covenant? No. no. Oh, Covenant okay. was taken care of. So that popcorn's only four days old. Yeah. Uh, it's still not the best. <laughs> it's like Are you two kidding? Harkins old... can last ten days. No. Harkins popcorn. Yeah, is... they can. Uh, it's just... It's popcorn to go for. Is not it like disturbing. The, uh, it's like, is it like the McDonald's hamburgers that you can leave out for a year and they never get moldy? This is true. 
they're not actually food because because uh, Morgan Spurlock said so. Well, I'm not spending a dollar for food. <laughs> I'm spending a dollar for a hot and spicy McChicken. This is true. Speaking of movies, uh, Zack Snyder. Yeah, he's a, a pretty big movie guy. I, I really don't. So we, uh, on our little list of things to talk about, was it you who put this? Yes. Connor uh, labeled this story, <laughs> Snyder's daughter dies, realizes two months later. It's a big time gap. So his 20-year-old daughter was 20. Okay. Commit suicide mm-hmm. uh, back in March. Yes. And this, you know, wasn't, like, no one didn't tell him. He knew of it. But then just recently... A week ago. In the ass end of May, he decides, okay, the stress from my daughter having died is now going to force me to step down from Justice League. It's like he finished it first, though. He was like, you know, I can do a little more. And then uh, the timing on it is very strange. One would expect him to stop, you know, and bail immediately. I don't know if maybe he... It could have been his studio contract, and he had to wait till they had an adequate replacement. Uh, you know, I feel that will have been mentioned because I mean, the two month thing was immediately recognized by almost everybody. Yeah, it's just it's very strange. I mean, props to him for being a trooper for trying to you know keep going, but I don't know. Just I think it's strange. he had so he still more to do in Justice League. Yeah, he had a checklist of things he wants in the movie, and once his daughter died, he realized I won't be able to finish this. I will now prioritize how many of these I can do in a short time span to ensure they're there, mm-hmm. get through them, and then step down. Yeah, so Joss Whedon now is uh, in charge. The which Avengers guy. Could be, could be something, could be nothing. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big thing. But I'm not going to say he's overhyped. For but... the next one, I think that's going to be incredibly noticeable. Yeah, it, it seems like it's just so far along in production that he won't really have that much of a chance to put his his touch on it. It'll be like but... TV shows where they have like a guest director for an mm-hmm. episode, and you can kind of tell which ones were who. But yeah, but I, I definitely do agree with Connor that if he's involved in the next movie, I think he could do a lot of good for the series. Mm-hmm. I just, it's such well, an interesting... I don't know about good for the series, mm-hmm. because Age of Ultron was... <laughs> that was him, wasn't it? I it for... was, I yeah. thought he bailed after the first one for no, some No, it was reason. after Ultron. Huh. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think that he will, you know, do just fine. He's probably, he seems like an honorable kind of guy, and he'll, like, take what Snyder wanted and just act as a proxy for him. Yeah. Um, Yeah. You know, he just seems like he'd be willing to put down the ego or whatever, you know, and not be like, oh, I'm the director, I'm gonna do whatever I want. He's like, I'm gonna fulfill your vision, as if, like, you know, when a director dies, you would kind of, like, see out what they would have wanted. Um... He seems, just to me personally, like the kind of guy who would be cool about that. Worst comes to worst, they would probably have Nolan step in for some supervisory stuff. Because with uh, Batman v Superman, uh, Snyder had gone to Nolan about some key story elements Mm -hmm. to ask his opinion on it to see whether or not he should have gone through with it. So, on the relationship between those two, I believe if they don't think Joss Whedon's going to do a good unsupervised job they might bring in someone else as a kind of a caretaker for the caretaker Mm -hmm. to ensure that snyder's will be done but i don't think it's gonna be that bad with how far into production justice league is do you think there were any concerns that he might like have some kind of weird disney alliance and would like intentionally fuck the dc cinematic universe i'm sure if there were any with the studio they put they very much reflected upon that in the contract, and there would be severe consequences for Whedon if he acted upon that. I, like, I don't think he has oh, that oh, sense of, like... I'm sure he feels responsible for, like, the success of Marvel, but I don't feel like he's like, oh, I'm gonna... because he voluntarily stepped away from Avengers after Age of Ultron. That's true. I mean, there's so much studio in No one removed and, him from it. He yeah. just decided, I've been doing this for however many fucking years... I'm gonna step away so I can do other things because I want to spend the next 15 years of my film career doing Marvel. Yeah, I don't understand Marvel how... Marvel will never end. No. It will not. They said that they're gonna stop with the current set of Avengers after the sec- or the fourth? Fourth Avengers film. Is that gonna be like Infinity Wars Part 2? Yeah, it's like no, Infinity they, Gauntlet actually, is they the cut possible. Infin- Infinity Wars was, ri- was originally two movies. 
they've reduced that to one movie, and they've now put another Avengers after Infinity Wars. Allegedly, oh. Infinity like Gauntlet. Uh, Zoe Saldana, I think it was, in an interview, like, everybody thought she gave away the title, because she said, like, oh, we gotta get back together and shoot for Gauntlet. And that could have been, like, a production code name or something, but... Mm -hmm. uh, so I, that that's going to be the fourth film, and after that, they're pretty much axing all the currently existing people, and Just about. like moving forward. And they might do like the whole new Avengers that they set up with, um, not Spider Man. Uh, well, yeah. So like Spider Man, Scarlet Witch, uh, God, the dude from uh, Dead Quicksilver. They could bring him back. Captain America's buddy, the, the flight Falcon. suit, Falcon. There we go. I kept wanting to say Vulture because Vulture is such a thing. Vulture um, is. Such, they somehow made Vulture not shitty for Homecoming. I actually think I'll enjoy him as a character. He's got I, like the worst pop vinyl. He does. No, the pop vinyl is horrendous. <laughs> it's somehow worse than the Archon from Andromeda. <laughs> but I think the movie he's gonna be done pretty well. I because mean, they've got um, the founder Michael Keaton as him which is great because keaton had a hell of a pickup after birdman we said we were gonna go see the founder and we never did we didn't and now we actually have, i want to it's out on dvd and we should pick it up because I, I still really want to see it i i don't like biopics but i'm totally into this one probably because i eat at mcdonald's four days a week but right that's my it's, own hang up it's good <laughs> I, I was gonna say food but um no it's not it's good it's uh it fills my it's belly free real estate <laughs> <laughs> It's good pseudo food. It does a great uh, imitation of food. Yeah. So, I mean, so going back to um, Avengers, what the? Why are they doing something after Infinity Wars? Like the entire, like, thing they've been leading up to is Thanos. I don't greatest, understand. Yeah, overarching. It would make sense if they put it before Thanos. Thanos. Not after him. Well, I but think it's the Marvel be... comic series is so much more than just Thanos. Well, I think. But the they're thing not going is... to stop with Marvel after Thanos. Mm -hmm. But all of these movies in this timeline have been leading up to Thanos. I think it's. They. I think it'll be been like just weird. as much world building as they have been focusing on that. No, I think the difference is is that it's not Avenger or it's not Infinity Wars Part One and Part Two. I think it's going to be. Infinity Wars and Infinity Wars 2, effectively. It'll be a sequel to that one. So there'll be one film where they do probably like 50 to 60% of the things. And then they finish it up in the second one. Okay, yeah, that's what I heard. Really? I heard that it was initially going to be Infinity Wars Part 1 and Part 2. Yeah. I just I can't changed, imagine them. I heard that they changed the name of the second movie. Mm -hmm. But that it was still going to effectively be Infinity Wars 2. I think it's effectively going to be, because I think you're right. Like, what when you spend, what, 14 years, it feels like? When did Iron Man 1 come out? When we were, like, 2? No, I remember. <laughs> wasn't that, uh, like, 08? Damn, that's I a lot later than Batman I thought it was. Begins, wasn't it? Wow, that's, that's a lot later than I thought so it was. Within so nine long years. Ago. Uh, nine no, years. No, it was probably oh five. I want to say oh five. Thirteen years of build up sounds right. So thirteen years effectively. Well, it's not thirteen years of build up because Iron Man one and two had, had nothing, nothing to do with it. But no, I'm saying like to have all of this shit and to have so many movies leading up to the gems and the Thanos and all that. And to, like, finish it up and then squeak out one more movie? What could you possibly put in that movie that's going to interest me once the Infinity Wars are wrapped up? I I mean, I've enjoyed the Guardians movies excessively. Yeah. Oh, the, the second one focused so great. nothing on any gems, and it was great. Yeah. The first one was actually mainly about a gem, but it wasn't about the gem being for the gun. It was about the gem with the character who was using Thanos it. Thanos was straight up, like, the behind-the-scenes villain the whole time. He was. And he couldn't... It didn't matter. It like, didn't it was not all. about any of that. He yeah. was just there because it made sense, and I loved that about it. It was so much less down your throat. Hey, we're setting up the MCEU. Get ready. Start no, that... Because uh, that stone's now on... Um, Xandar, was it? Yeah, it's in the Nova Corps lockup. I believe. So they've got like five of the six gems are introduced and they're all across the universe and the different movies. Mm -hmm. 
the sixth one isn't introduced, it's probably gonna be with Warlock or Thanos. Mm hmm That would make sense. But... I, I think Thanos is gonna have it already. He's gotta have like he one. Should. He can't yeah, have none yeah, of them. It wouldn't make sense for him to have the gauntlet and then not any of the gems. Right. I think the gauntlet plus one gem would make logical sense. Yeah. Everybody ready up. But I and it actually was a wait for Iron Man, so it's only been nine years. Damn. It feels like it's been so long. It does. It really Probably because, like, two to three films a year. I mean, it just... It's been a bit of a beating. I'm it excited for the end. I'm not going to lie. Like, I still look forward to the next ones, but God, do I want to move on. I'm very excited for the end because modern cinema is now superhero cinema. Yeah. I Since would love like to have new shit. Every single blockbuster has been Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Every year has been, hey, I can't wait for the big movie of the year. Hint, hint, Marvel movie to come out and see it. Once they die, we can actually go back to how movies were before. And then every handful of years, it's you know, big Pixar film kind of. Right. Takes or it. no, DC's now gonna do their thing. Yeah, but I don't think I don't, DC's I, doing good. I don't think DC's gonna be anywhere near as successful. No. Or long. It won't be. They got into it too late. Or as successful. Oh no! It's, they it's waited not too that long. they got into it too late. Is that they don't take the time to like set things up. Like, Marvel, I mean, it has been a lot of movies and it has been a little tiring, but they have gone through the trouble of, like, doing a lot of world building and making sure all of the characters are introduced. Mm -hmm. and they all have, like, their own backstories that have been explained. Mm -hmm. And then... Justice League, I mean, they're introducing half of the Justice League in the film. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And I feel like DC, they should... I mean, it, this is also kind of a result of them getting into it too late. But they're just trying to rush to, like, the end game. Because they know the interest is going to die out. They can't yeah. play the nine-year game. No, I'm not going to give no, a shit in nine years about DC stuff. Also, I feel like it's... I mean, this might be my own personal, um, like, I guess, prejudices against DC. But it seems like Marvel is just so much better formatted for, like, the feel-good superhero action movie, like, genre. I, it seems like... DC superheroes are a lot more serious, so they don't really lend to that sort of. Like, I feel like Marvel movie. never got out of that like second age of comics where everything was allowed to be kind of stupid, mm -hmm. and you'd look past it. And DC like went hard towards the like dark and grungy. No, no, some Marvel did. Like if you look at Punisher, that comic oh, yeah. series has been very, oh, very yeah. consistent and. Marvel's been very much not afraid to have that dark, grungy stuff. But their best-selling stuff, hands down, has been the more light, funky, kind of do-whatever And even if it was serious, you know, it was still kind of rooted in, like, fantasy and this and that. You know, DC stayed, for the most part, within, like, the reins of current reality and science and technology, and so it's got just a more grounded feeling to it. I actually disagree. I think Marvel has been more close to reality with a looser grip on how they handle it, whereas DC has been much more unrealistic, but a lot more serious in saying, hey, you know, believe this. Hey, this is what we're doing. Take it seriously. And Marvel's been, this is what we're doing. You don't have to take it seriously because you can already kind of see it. Yeah, I mean... Personally, I think the event not Avengers, um, Guardians of the Galaxy have by far been my favorite Marvel movies that have come they've out been recently. The least formulated. Uh, yes, and they've also, I mean, arguably been like the most, like unrealistic in terms of like what's currently happening in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, they couldn't be more like they went out of space. their way to avoid Earth. Yeah, exactly. They got off it as quickly as possible and never go back to it. Mm -hmm. Which is great. They yeah. actually changed, like, really characters' wonderful. backstories to make sure that Peter Quill was the only Terran character. Yeah. Which was nice. And, because now, um, Guardians is the only stuff outside of main Marvel movies that has been adding anything besides Earth. Mm -hmm. Thor Ragnarok now will also be doing that. So. And I'm excited as hell for Ragnarok. I am, even though the trailer was, like, the worst Marvel trailer I've seen in my life. They tried to do, like, a Guardians trailer, and it just didn't really vibe. It, yeah, not at all. Yeah, it didn't look very good. They didn't commit to it any one style. It was, like, style. a 100% Guardians trailer. They tried to use the iconic music style. The 70s fonts. Or not right. seven, like, 80s um, retro fonts. Yeah, 80s retro fonts, um, outdated music that was popular once. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, not yeah, that it was yeah. bad, but, you know, just very much 
nostalgic stuff. They... And it opens with the fucking anime, I know what you're thinking. How did I get here? Oh, right, you oh, hate yeah. that. I forgot it's about so that. Bad. that. I, I can't stand that. I hate, like, the self-narration. <laughs> it's the worst. It is horrible. Also, yeah, the... The, uh, like the art for the title is such a ripoff of Guardians. It's ridiculous. I know. I blame them because Guardians has been wildly successful. Mm-hmm. But man, they didn't do it well. I no. think they were trying to say like, look, we're getting more lighthearted because like Dark World, they just they done fucked with yeah. what they were going yeah, for. They and so I think that's what they were trying to do is like, it's not going to be like Dark World. Don't worry about that. I am excited that they have Hulk and Ragnarok. Yeah. Because they just removed him after Ultron and didn't address it. He's been gone for like six films, hasn't he? He's been he? gone for a long while. Yeah. Did they ever have an explanation as to why he was not in Civil War? He flew off. He flew. And, and then he I, disappeared. At the end of Ultron, he left. And I, then he went into so hiding. So that he could just avoid any of that again. They brought him up. They were like, how is he doing? Like, oh, we still can't find him. And I never saw it. Civil War, so I don't know. Wow. Really? I actually haven't seen a lot of Marvel movies. You guys know this. I don't see movies ever because I'm, I'm a sad human being. Well, it's because you're in Tucson. I see a lot of movies. You do, and I don't understand. I love movies. I, lo- I do love movies, They're but I like just... like my favorite art medium. I didn't I'm get a game, film degree I'm Obviously, not video games are my mm-hmm. greatest time sink in that regard, but I don't like TV shows because they're crippled so much by how they have to be produced. Yeah, I, the whole the whole fact that like every episode has to be a cliffhanger is kind of really just shitty. Just about, yeah. That it's a week to week, you have to do something that people want to keep coming back. <laughs> which is why I like Netflix originals, because they get the entire season paid off, they get to do it, release all episodes at once, so they get to do it however they want. Because mm-hmm. it's made to be watched in a sitting. Right, which they're like banking on you binging. Reduces, it. Um, heavily reduces the whole, all the flaws I see in normal television. Although you have to admit, like the first two or three episodes are still like that because they have to yeah, get people no, hooked. I'll, yeah, but I think after that, they that's do, how you start a yeah, binge they, session. They do tend you never to... start anything strong, <laughs> except maybe House of Cards. No, I. That I... opening scene with just dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's a metaphor. I'm gonna be the president. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I don't like comic books, you which don't is like weird. Comic uh, no, books? I don't. Which is weird because obviously they've spawned like almost everything. But it's you buy a comic book for however much, you get ten pages. That's mostly art, little dialogue, and progress the story minusculely. I I don't like how f- I don't like how comic books are produced and how they're like such a. a a money sink. Just wait for the trade. To be able to actually read them is ridiculously... It's like a a horrible process that you have to go through. I could not follow them week to week like I could a TV show. Oh no, it's awful. And it's expensive. But I think... If you can, if you want to risk going onto like those really sketchy websites that allow you to just like read a bunch of um, backlogged comic books, I think that's a really great way of doing it. I, I've done that a few I'm, times, yeah. I will admit, and I think it's why my last computer just <laughs> shat itself. You deserve it. Pirating <laughs> is bad. Marvel released a thing, like a service where you could just get their whole library of they backlog. Did. Really? Um, they did? I, I, went I don't think it's the entirety of the library, but a lot. It's a shit ton. Yeah. Huh. But that's the thing, is in this day and age, comics are not feasible, and if I just sit around waiting for a comic line to be finished, then I can pick up uh, like them combined into one book. Well, it's like whatever. how you do your Telltale games. You wait till the last chapter's out, and then you get it all. So well, like you buy the trade. I pick them up chapter by chapter. I well, those don't are called understand fools. that. They are fools. It makes no sense. But the thing is, Telltale, when they make the game, um, it's already produced. Yeah. They're getting all five out. If everyone did what I do with comic books, where they wait until the end to just buy all of them at once, mm. they would die. So I can't do that because it's douchey, so I'll just not support them at all because it's the more honorable option. Just buy the merch. Buy, buy the Batman wallets and the posters. You know, I, I am exces- excessively picky in how I, uh, what's the term, and express my interests. Yeah. Yeah, you really are. <laughs> I can't buy 90-some percent, percent of merch because I hate it. I am still That's baffled. That's why pops are perfect. Pops are because there are so many. Four out of five pops are shit in my eyes. And then there's like one in five roughly that I'm, oh, that's a pretty cool design. They did that character well. I would like having that. 
when I saw how many pops you had like two weeks ago, I was actually really surprised as to the number that you actually had. Because they never really seem like your thing. They're not my biggest thing, but I, I've started collecting them a bit more. It's because they start as just people get them as gifts because they're great gifts. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, I, you like Deadpool. There are 80 different Deadpool pops. Here's the one I thought you would like. And they're all bad. All of them suck. Don't buy them. <laughs> There's not a single good Deadpool pop. But um, I got like four or five as gifts, and I didn't just want four or five at that point. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll pick up some more that I like, because they had Witcher Pops that were actually done really well. Oh, the Witcher Pops look so good. They're surprisingly, it like, so the great. best. They had the Arkham Quinn, yeah. so I had to pick that up. Bombshell Quinn. Bombshell Quinn so is So many good great. Quins, really. Actually, I think Quinn is no, the consistently best. No, there are, like, three best. good Quins. I don't like the other Quins. Uh, I, I don't think like she's... classic bodysuit Quinn. Ah, oh, that's, like... I'm all about that. Yeah, but I'm not a big fan of classic bodysuit. In cool. Arkham Knight, in the uh, Batgirl DLC, they have her in the latex bodysuit, and they made slight adjustments to it. I won't be able to pick out what they were, but those, like that one, looked amazing, and I would love a pop of specifically Arkham Knight classic bodysuit Quinn. Classic classic Quinn, I think, is just bad. 18,000 and... I also hate any classic guy because she's just a poor design. Yeah... Yeah, I don't really like the design of most early Batman, really anything. It just all looks very, like, silly. And I mean, personally, I, I don't mean, care for original Iron Man design, but it's not bad. Like the silver bullet Mach 1 looking one? No, like, uh, the, uh, like kind of almost bucket helmet Iron yeah. Man, just black and red, I mean, oh, okay. gold and red. Got it, got it, got it, yeah. No, yeah. Mark 1, Mark 1 is always ugly. <laughs> uh, Jesus, uh, big, not related to Batman rock. or Iron Man. But, uh, Robocop. That's a thing now. I didn't mind oh, yes. reboot. Speaking, while we're still on movies, mm -hmm. I did like the new Robocop. Um, guess what, guys? Freaked me out the scene where he's just like a head and organs. Oh, no, floating. I detested that. I can't that, stand that. You know, you exactly see, like, why. he's like a plastic shell That's of organs. Horrifying. That was an amazing moment because I thought it was like, what a great chance to just. Like, to humanize and get so much pity for him, because you're like, oh god, this is his existence. Yeah. Great fucking moment. It was. Uh, but, yeah, no, I mean, Robocop has been, or Dubai now has a fully functional robotic police officer. Um, Caveat. He's pretty it, much a kiosk. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> like a mall cop. What? He's basically a mall cop. Like, you wouldn't say a mall cop is a fully functioning police officer. <laughs> While he is a fully functioning police officer, he's just a mall kiosk. He's Paul Blart that you can touch. Yeah, so essentially what I it is... I don't think wants to touch Paul Blart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a little, like, robot. I mean, it's shaped like a man, obviously. Yeah, and it's a man a, robot. There's, like, a chest, and in the chest there's a screen. And what it allows you to do is pretty much just, like, putting your grievance into the screen and then... That's it. And you can, like, file, pay tickets and citations, I think. Yeah, I think you can also and do you can that. report things. Can't be efficient, but you can report yeah. things. Yeah, you go up and you can report a bunch of crimes or complaints and grievances. I don't know if they have a 911 type system in Dubai. Maybe this is the best thing for them. But I feel like here, just calling would be quicker than typing out, I am being shot. <laughs> <laughs> Personally. I, I don't think it's quite for that sort nah, of that's what crime. It's for. That's exactly what's for. <laughs> Is them all being robbed? We don't know because we took all the mall cops away. <laughs> Let the robot know and then he'll tell us. It's also got like a camera in its face. It has live reasons. action feed yeah, live action uh, to the police station. So, so they can it's effectively a security camera it's built CCTV in. It's CCTV that you can go uh, make complaints to. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting step into something more i don't know why it has to be man-shaped i think this could have easily just been like a you know fucking coca-cola machine for mm -hmm. all it matters. yeah it easily could have been a kiosk I d <laughs> i'd I don't like even... to get a sprite while i'm reporting i'm being shot can it even move i mean i, I assume it can, can. Uh, maybe i didn't actually look at the design too too much i, I don't I think there was a preview walk, video but it might be able to just roll around why is it so hard to get robots to walk because they don't have it's they weird. can't like adjust in time as well they don't, yeah, they don't have the live action, uh, like, interpretation that we do for actions. It's weird. That's, like, the biggest hang-up on, like, 
you know, android robot type things is just getting them to walk. Well, it's also, you're not going to go through and build a thousand different small metallic muscles. Yeah, true. It, the thing is that, I mean, metal is rigid. Yeah, so usually. The, yeah. For the most carbon part. Fiber. <laughs> carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, metal. everything. No, but I mean, in place of it, because carbon fiber is used uh, hand in hand with metal. I thought it was still, like, fairly rigid material. No, it's, but it's, it's rigid, steel. but it's a cord. Yeah, oh, yeah. That is true. Okay. Still, in order to get it to move, you yeah. need to have, like, you. it's hard to replicate a joint. Yeah. Because a joint in a human can have, so like, such a wide degree of Plus, I guess legs have, it. like, and three so pivot points. Yeah. Factors. Yeah, you get, like, the hip, the knee, the ankle. And then all of those can move in multiple directions mm -hmm. and i guess we can and support also, ourselves with any point of our foot touching the ground yeah Robots and also we can, can use like our arms and whatnot to offset our center of balance if we True. really need to so i mean if we had the you know you. limitless funding we could make a very functioning walking robot but only like one i just hope we never do because that's one step closer to actual androids and i cannot stand that idea then we get like running robots Ugh. Oh, running get, like, robots sounds running really robots with terrifying. knives. <laughs> then they become running robots oh with God, guns and dicks. I think they'd stop. Wait, knives. why would why do why would they not put guns on this running robot before knives? Well, if it's running, what does it need bullets <laughs> for? It's stationary robots that you put guns on. Yeah. Well, this this could be a mobile. Humans I mean, it doesn't don't... have to only be running. Humans I assume if it, it never can run, I assume if it can run, it can stop. If it drops below 20 miles an hour, it actually is brought in for repairs because it's been flagged as broken. I thought you were going to say that it explodes. Well, no, the design is, is miserable. Speed. The design is so bad that it has to keep a certain pace just to stay upright like a motorcycle, how it's mm -hmm. hard to balance at a low speed. It's basic, it has to keep running to keep they, itself upright with right. centripetal force. They couldn't get the joints or movement right, so if it drops below the speed, it, it can't just get back up to it. It just falls forward. Yeah. Yeah. They actually have to start it. They just, uh, they like tow it behind a car and just drop it. And, and it's dead it's this <laughs> test track that they have one location, all the robots are made, that they have a custom thing that brings them to that max speed. It's like and a runway. from the end of the track, they send them just running throughout the country to where they need to go. So it's kind of like, um... The battery is amazing, needless <laughs> to say. It's kind of like the, uh, the catapult on, like, aircraft carriers, yes. where it just, like, launches them to yeah, the speed exactly. they need to take off. Because they gotta get there immediately. <laughs> uh, Same system. That's great. And then you give it a knife. <laughs> and a badge. <laughs> Two knives, a badge, a hat. Uh, good catch line. Yeah. Wait, why would it need but a badge? But no movable it's mouth, like... it's just like a speaker. Well, yeah, why would you put a mouth on it? This isn't Destiny. <laughs> why no, would... it isn't. <laughs> It's somehow worse. <laughs> uh, also, why would you give it a badge if it's running tw 20 miles an hour? I can't imagine many people... Being, they like, need to be able to identify it. Resisting. That's it's not actually, a cop. Oh, wait, it's got a badge. It's just, be... like, circling you. If you get arrested by... It actually, like, grabs you by an arm or the scruff of your And just neck, drags you. And you then are flying, you know, at least 20, upwards of 45 miles an hour behind it. So your arm is easily dislocated. Uh, it also takes, like, too long to get back to base. So it doesn't do a trip home with every perp it catches. It, it gets, like, five or six before it, it goes has back. It like, three arms on its back that just hold people. It's like a carabiner points. and a rope, and it, like hooks you in and just drags you behind until it gets three more people mm -hmm. and then the first person who gets caught actually dies from robot. usually yeah. uh, also from getting kicked in the head by robot legs <laughs> repeatedly yeah it's a it's a good system so basically <laughs> basically the first guy he's able to pick up minors by the way any minor <laughs> felony anybody oh, yeah. under the age of 18 he has jurisdiction oh. and it so. can be really like click it or ticket it, it'll pull you out of the car for not wearing a seat belt lock you in and drag you for a mile they've I, got highway patrol versions of these by the way they still run though they don't have like wheels or anything <laughs> no, they, they run at 75 run miles at 70 per hour, hour to keep up with the uh, speed of traffic basically the first person that they pick up is just like a shield for the next two <laughs> yes. people yeah so that they don't the get horribly sled. mangled on the on this road yeah and you can't put like a sled or anything behind it to put the bodies on because it slows it down too much mm-hmm you know, the thing that runs at 75 miles an hour 
couldn't benefit from a sled, then we'll just drop it down to 72 miles I mean, the hour. next iteration, we could maybe make some adjustments, but change and revolution aren't always pretty. <laughs> Most likely what we do is it ties you into, like, sort of like a, uh, what's it called, like a Jacob's Cross, basically a cross, and it runs at such a speed that it just kites you behind it. So you're just you're what, you're, 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 you... you're tied into like a crucifix basically with like a kite structure. So okay. once it starts running, you're just so fly they, behind so they it. literally just tie you to a kite. You yeah, are but the kite. The image isn't you know painful enough if you don't imagine being nailed to oh, the so you're kite. Actually, how, oh no, oh, it, they're not using it's nails. Full, how are no, supposed it's to be? it's full okay. blown. Yeah. So so. This robot is going to run beside your car, crucify you, pull you out of your car, yes, nail you to a cross, yes, attach a kite like <laughs> fabric or mesh to this cross, yes, attach a string to your body, and then like fly you behind it all while running at 75 miles an hour. Unless yeah. you have a ponytail, it's what not... does it do if you have a ponytail? He doesn't need the string. Oh my god. <laughs> It just holds on. It's a horrifying system. Oh. Before you even realize what's happening, you're already, like, nailed. It's mm. it's horrendous. The pain catches up midair. It actually isn't legal in any way, but everyone who's ever protested has immediately been taken down by hordes of these robots. Yeah, they made it a crime to, like, speak out against them. Like, libel laws specifically for these. So they will find you. And they will crucify you and fly your body. We actually don't know who regulates them. They're kind of their own They're autonomous. private security oh, force yeah, now. They, uh, that it's, just it's all private sector. dead people off at police stations. You think the government could get funding for this? Absolutely not. Elon Musk was, like, all about it. <laughs> yeah, he was. This is how he became a supervillain, by his own private robot police force that runs on brutality. Oh, that's always they get all the tunnels for. <laughs> So Elon Musk is, he's just inventing Skynet at this point, right? Elon Musk is a Bond villain. Yeah, he's, he's, 100%. We're, we're waiting for his, like, backstory to finish. There's going to be some start. events in the near future that's going to trigger him, and he's going to go into world domination mode. What, what, what makes you think he's not already triggered and he's just amassing his resources? Maybe he's like, he's like a long-term... Once they start amassing dude. resources, they stop helping, though. He just says, okay, I'm good with where I am. I'm going to sit back a while. And then he comes out with, I lie! Time to die! But he's still helping out right now. I, I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. Because you can be, like, building an empire and amassing resources. Like, you, you need to be able to build the infrastructure in order to, like, put his nefarious scheme into action. Yeah, it's like civilization. Yeah, so he has to be able... He has to, like, stay involved in the community and pretend like he's helping as, like, just a ruse for him to set up his little diabolical scheme. He needs an underground That he can then trigger, layer. like, five years down the road. Do you think he'd have an underground or underwater layer? I think he... Um, space, space. Yeah. obviously. Space It takes too long to get up there. No, it's gonna no, be orbital. No, it's space. Eh, it's Everything an underground... Oh, I like going space to feed X? Back. It's SpaceX. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, How did, did I not know that? Yeah, he failed out You know nothing of supervillains. No, I don't. Yeah, he's Every supervillain started as a superhero. I would say... Green I Goblin helped out so much. No. Oh, really, you went crazy. Yeah, I mean, Willem I mean, Dafoe made a lot of excellent I, films before just fucking losing it. Yeah, he did. And we have, uh, we have to thank him for all those. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did technically make Spider-Man. Yeah. Which is, like, pretty... That's pretty decent. Yeah. I don't know, Spider-Man's kind of a faggot. I mean, this is true, but he, he sometimes occasionally helps It's great. Like, if Spider-Man was made today, if he hadn't existed, he was a new hero that was made today, I don't think he'd be at all successful. I don't think any hero that was, like, new hero made today would be successful at all. I think if Thor they would. had just as many... You think Thor? I think if anything, Iron Man would be successful. Iron, Iron Man Man's would, easy. Yes. I think Thor is easy, because it's I just think... mythology It's re-imagined. just a very handsome man. I think Batman could if they st- had the same quality rogues gallery because Batman's entire thing is all of his villains. That's yeah. They'd have to love. like start at the, like the darkest Batman though. I don't think exactly. he could be the yeah. middle ground Batman. It couldn't be like silly '80s Batman. It'd have to like start with Killing Joke and just go from there. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could probably. Or work. um, what's it? Uh, Nightfall. Yeah, they could do Nightfall. Yeah, I could see that. But yeah, no, they they'd have to sort of hit the ground running uh they wouldn't that's what they've done with their movies (laughs) 
Uh, I don't know. Batman Begins was kind of slow. No, I mean uh, with the new... Because uh, Man of Steel, uh, Superman movie, Batman vs. Superman, mm-hmm. way faster than Man of Steel. Yeah. Like, and Man of Steel it started it. slow mm-hmm. and kind of ended in a, like, power walk. Batman vs. Superman started at a hard jog. Yeah, but it never, like, stopped to think, wait, I'm, is, is what I'm doing making sense? Oh, well, keep moving. Well, that's because they cut so much Snyder's vision. They, like, blazed past all the problems. They just figured if you keep throwing things in front of the audience's face, they won't remember that weird thing. They were wrong. You couldn't hang up on, like, you couldn't get hung up on the Martha thing <clears throat> because you go right back into a fight. Martha. But no, you can the get hung up on the Martha thing. resolution. Martha. Ah. Uh, somebody made that decision, and somebody... It was Snyder. ...should not have. It had to be Snyder. There's no way that pivotal moment will have ended up there if Snyder didn't want it. Could have been weird studio pressure. Uh, I don't know, because after Watchmen and uh, Man of Steel, they kind of just said, Hey, we get it now. We'll let you do you. Mm-hmm. That's true. BVS was 90-some percent Snyder. Which makes me worried for him. It does, yeah. I mean, that... Uh-huh. <laughs> I was going to make a dead daughter joke. Well, I'll move past it. Yeah. It wasn't there. We should just not uh, not do that. <laughs> Speaking of things that shouldn't be done, uh, Mario meets the Raving Rabbids oh, for some reason. This can't. That can't be good. I yeah. never liked him. I mean, I played a lot of the Rayman games, and I... Uh, you know, enjoyed some of them, and I even picked up, you know, like, the Raving Rabbids side game, because I was like, this could be fun, silly mini games, and, right. like, they're okay, but it's like, they're like, I don't know, the minions of, like, video games yeah. now. Yeah, they were the like, minions before they're the one minions. one-for-one minions. And it's just... Uh, only they're, like, a less successful minions, which doesn't make it any That's better. what got me, is, like, when was the last time anybody, like, it's not even, like, the last game to have rabbits was, had to have been four years ago at a minimum. No, way more than that. I I'm honestly, at a like, minimum. forgot that the rabbits, like, And then for just existed. out of the blue, Nintendo's like, hey, I know there's only six games on the Switch, but one of them will have rabbits, and we're like, why? You could so have given looking... us anything. I just wanted a new Mario RPG. Yeah, I was like, this, uh, oh, cool, the, oh, rabbit, okay. Yeah. Like, Mario Galaxy was great. Oh, oh my Mario god. Mario Galaxy was the best. Super Mario Sunshine is my favorite GameCube game behind Pikmin. Oh. Obviously. Super Mario Galaxy was pretty damn good. I liked it a lot. One and two. Both of them just blew me the hell away. I never played the second one. Like, the Mario RPGs have been they great, work. surprisingly, yeah. from the base material... If you looked at Super Mario Bros. and they said, hey, we're going to do an RPG, you have been, what? Yeah. Outside that... of Super Mario RPG, <laughs> which was interesting, but certainly not great. Right. <laughs> was Dr. Mario an RPG? I no, it's a Tetris-type game. Okay, I never actually played that game. No, it's, and yeah. I don't think I've seen anything other than just Mario dressed up as a doctor. Yeah, it's a puzzle game. Okay, then. Um, But no, I, uh, I definitely... Just don't understand the the logic that went into this. So. It has to be a hard Ubisoft money thing. I'm Fuck pretty sure Ubisoft, Ubisoft just went yeah. to Nintendo. Okay, Please? we're going to make mm-hmm. a Rabbit's Mario thing. Here's how much money we will give you. Here's how much money you won't make. <laughs> Let us do it. I think it was sort of like a, hey, you need proof that third-party developers give a crap about you. And Nintendo was like, but Ubisoft... You've literally made games for every single console that we've made. We don't need to prove Ubisoft is on our side. We need to prove that people who matter are on our side. Yeah, really fuck Ubisoft. (laughs) And Ubisoft was like, no, no, trust me. It'll look good for your image if you have a third-party crossover game. And literally anything would have been better. Yeah. I would have rather have had, like, a Mario and some like any other it could have been Star Fox any other Nintendo property crossover have been would have made just as much sense Star Fox was like in a game that wasn't Smash uh, 3 years no, ago right not even uh the uh zero is there yeah. Is, yeah there was actually a pretty recent one what is this i've it was not on the Wii U this. it was on oh, the Wii U oh i mean that explains it yeah it was who got a Wii U hi uh 13 million <laughs> people tops Oh, right, we did look up the numbers on that. <laughs> you looked up how many we people did. bought it. And he was like within, 30. like, a million, too. I was, because Eight. I'm smart, and the Wii U sucks. And they were thinking it was dozens of millions of Wii U's that were I sold. thought it was, like, 30-something. It was, it was yeah. and dozen. 
Yeah, it was eight also thirty and single is, dozen. is only two dozens, which I guess is still dozens. No, Michael thought it was at least eight. Thirty's two and a half dozens. Oh, I guess that is two and a half dozens. Yeah, so there you go. I thought it was eighty million. At least you thought uh, was oh, I was in the thirties. I mean, he was one of those. Yeah, he bought two million himself. And the Wii is isn't the Wii the best-selling console of all time? I think so. I mean, that's because it 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 was it cheap existed and it had forever. Great family stuff. Well, also, plus when I, it came out, it there was nothing like it that yeah, mattered. Yeah, yeah. It was very fresh. It was ahead of its time. Everyone tried to copy it, and also, it just kept also doing like, great. Also, PlayStation Move, baby. Oh, no. It had but such the, the excellent gap, games. The gap between the Wii coming out and the Wii U coming out, wasn't that like nine years or something It was like a long that? ass time. It was a, very, it was a long time. very long time for a lot of families to buy it. I want to say the Wii was probably like 2006. Six, maybe 2005 and then the wii u feels like it was only 2014 yeah that sounds about right so and, I, mean, I mean the switch is just a better wii u it's what it should have been in the first place yeah yeah if the switch uh, has had all the innovation two years ago all the tech. i think it would have done fantastically because two years is when the 3ds started to decline yeah but they just keep fucking up in so many ways like nintendo they just... has the greatest potential for all of their things and they just fuck up everything it's because it's a monumental it's a company run by old japanese dudes and the one thing old japanese dudes do really well is just do what they've been doing forever mm -hmm. legacy only hurts yeah mark i mean not mario nintendo is very good at doing nintendo things yeah which is which is go. pretty much smash and mario <laughs> and then when they try to step outside of that they, they they don't do a good job they make dumb risks and though that's the thing is they make risk but they usually make really dumb risks and then it fails and they're like this is why we never take risks and people are like no you just took the wrong ones i don't know it's it's a miracle they ever stopped selling playing cards with how they run their company yeah you would never think that. Wait, they that. sold playing cards? I have a set, actually. They used to like sell just like Hanafuda playing cards. And uh, then they got into like cabinets for like arcades. And then fast forward 20, no, 35 years. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that was a good decision on their part. Yeah, it's a weird history. But yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, I just... been around for just so long. It's just a strange whole thing you it know is. if it were up to them they'd still be making snes games i'm convinced hey and SNES i'd still be games buying were them not bad. i'd still be buying the hell out of them absolutely not, i mean the nes classic sold fantastically well i'll buy i didn't much care for that i will go out of my way to hunt down an snes classic if they do make it yes all of especially if it has virtual console support all of my favorite games from like youthhood were snes i mean isn't it was essentially the only just a box with an emulator inside of it yeah that's all yep. it is it's just an officially licensed uh with a controller <laughs> oh that's cool is it like the old yeah ones the, that's the, the whole... horribly uncomfortable rectangular bricks no that's no, that's how rounded. hands are the SNES had rounded. The oh, it NES did? had square. Okay, yeah, had I, only, rectangle. I only ever had an NES, not an SNES. Yeah, no, the, the Super NES had What that. was the one that had, like, the, the middle prong? 64. That, that, oh, yeah, 64. That was a 64 that made zero sense. And no, still... it didn't. And yet it was still some of the best games ever. Yeah. The highest critically acclaimed and the best selling game ever, uh, Ocarina of Time, somehow managed to squeeze out on that horrendous controller i mean most didn't most games just ignore like the the z stick or whatever it was called the z no z was a button on the middle yeah. stick oh, it was on the, the back. trigger but the, yeah. like what was the you name could of either the stick? well you could either joystick or you could d-pad ah and, and everybody you would never do both and then yeah your a and b so it's like a b and your c pad which is the yellow buttons yes. was on the right uh, and then you, most people would either hold both, or for me it was like hold the middle, hold the right, and then left trigger was just always a pain. <laughs> or I know less bumper, I had a friend really. that would hold the middle part and the right part. Yeah, that's which. Eh, I don't like the uh, to make a decision. I think that's a weak design, but it's it was, oh, it was well. obviously a weak design. It was bold though, and it was it weird, was. and it was different, and I. I appreciated it. It was something different. Like, that's something I always liked, is their controllers were just so weird that something about it was cool to me. I was like, that's weird. I want to use that controller. 
How do I hold it? I don't fucking know. Let's play Pokemon mini games where every game you need to hold the controller a different way. <laughs> uh, I I like I if they remastered more old stuff, I'd buy it. The NES Classic sold very well because they had great games on it. Mm-hmm. The SNES Classic, if they do it, is going to be amazing. It, I mean, they just remastered uh, Loco Roco on PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Which was a PSP game, mm-hmm. which was amazing. And they are remastering Patapon. Mm-hmm. What the heck is that? Patapon is... Michael would have differing opinion, but for me, <laughs> Padapon is the best handheld game I've played ever. They just did Puyo Puyo Tetris, which is dope. I fucking love the Puyo Puyo games. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I was happy to see that. Do you think Nintendo... And this is probably going to be the last topic that we have time for here today, but do you think Nintendo would benefit from a ps now type service because microsoft is doing this for ten dollars a month which is half the cost of playstation now uh you can subscribe to a service where you have access to a catalog of like a hundred nintendo can microsoft classic games could nintendo do something like that they simply cannot because each and every console has been so wildly different with the control inputs yeah but i mean that's how virtual console works i'm with ps now the Sony PlayStation controller it just ignores the center button. Has, it just ignores the new features, but the design has always been the same. The same. Yeah. And Xbox controllers haven't changed. Whereas with Nintendo, if you did older games, they would obviously be a lot of rekeying and stuff. I mean, they've already done it though. That's what the Virtual Console is: is you can get 64 games, SNES, NES, GameCube. You can just well, play them on your Wii U. Well, doing well, is it? That's like, I want to say, a good chunk of their money is just people buying old games. Isn't that only because they have no current library? No, I mean, even like on the Wii, Virtual Console had to have made up a decent percentage of sales. I would say easily 30. I'm just, yeah, not educated in the area, and I can't remember. Well, you've never had a Wii or later, have you? I had a Wii. My family got one like everybody's family ever. (laughs) That's why it's the best selling console ever. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think. They, they, that's not an issue. My, my question would be, are they too dependent on the whole buy, buy unit virtual console? Or do you think there's just no interest in having access to a catalog of games that have been re-released, or re-released and remastered and put into collections and put on emulators so many times? I, I know there's an interest. I personally, I don't think there's any 64 game I would want to play again. The 64 really? is not my console. Oh, I was all about that. GameCube that was... was where my love was at. True, true. Pretty much everything on the GameCube to me was amazing. If they did, if they remastered all the GameCube stuff, I would love to play them. They but started, yeah. But there isn't the greatest demand for that because you can still easily play the GameCube in your home. If you're willing to dish out like 60 bucks for an old used game, yeah, you can play any GameCube title. Yeah. It's just expensive. In terms of secondary market games. Well, I mean, I still have... I had to get rid of my GameCube because it finally died to technical issues, mm-hmm. but I still have, like, three or four GameCube games. I have a GameCube in the living room. I've got... Uh, I've got a GameCube. Right, yeah. I'm. It's not something you got rid of. With the PS2, a lot of people kept them, but just as many end up selling them because of the PS3. Mm-hmm. I didn't get the backwards compatibility, so I still wow. have my 2, my 3, and That's, the 4. Yeah, my, I remember when the PS3 came out, it was actually I wasn't paying a specific bucks. couple models that had the backwards compatibility. There was the like $700 the ones. Dollar ones, yeah. The price drop was they removed the backwards compatible engine. Or not I engine, remember, but yeah, my dad hardware. picked it up for $700. Oh, that is so much money. So much, unprecedented amount of money. It was more then. The dollar was worth more then. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like now, I mean, the PS4 launched, you could get 450 Now you get regular PS4 for 300 250 Did it drop to two already? Uh, when it's on sale, 200 250 regularly. Right. A Pro is only like... Pro is only 4 Pro, yeah, I thought so. a Pro was 300 No, Pro's 4 <laughs> Oh, yeah, it must be 399 That's mm-hmm. what I'm remembering. Yeah. Which I'm excited to pick up a Pro. I'm waiting for them to do an exclusive skin for it. I've never had a console that has been a bundle skin thing. Like, the PS4 Destiny skin was beautiful, the mm-hmm. white one. 
And there are, like, obviously a lot of Xbox skin things. So many. That seems like a weird thing for you to be interested in. It is. In. It really is. But I have hopes that whatever it is will be great because um, they What did... franchise would you want? Ideally. Like, perfect. Ideally? Mm -hmm. My... I'm Bloodborne, hands down. Okay, yeah. Oh. But that's only if there's a Bloodborne 2, which is very highly debatably not. But ideally, if there's a Bloodborne bundle skin PS4 Pro, I will fucking sell my soul for that. That would be <laughs> yeah, tipped off. Yeah, I, I can see a Bloodborne skin PS4 being really, really cool. Right? I'd want them to change the shell a little bit for it, too. They would. They'd have to, I think. Like, put a, just a little... Not a lot, but just a little something to stuff. give it that kind of mm -hmm. archaic... Like what with uh, Overwatch did with Cruiser Diva. <laughs> change it just enough to where it's still disappointing. I like sucks. <laughs> In any case... No, because the PS4 oh. had faceplates. Yeah. You could swap those out. You could buy custom ones. I have an Order 18A6 one because mm -hmm. I love the game, mm -hmm. although all complaints about its length are valid. Yeah. It's a great faceplate, and I love how it looks on my PS4, but they didn't do well. Faceplates did not pick up, so they stopped making them. Yeah. And that bums me out because then I couldn't customize my PS4 anymore, so now I have to look at just pure... S this is a set skin for mm -hmm. whatever thing. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think they're going to have quality things. I'd be down. Well, I uh, I think that'll end today. Uh, join us next time for maybe a Michael. Probably a Michael. And uh, we'll look forward to not releasing these a month and a half after we recorded them. Yeah. Don't get used to that.